Hello everyone, this is NS, that's right, Naruto StarCraft, and today I have another game, and it is being played on Desert Oasis, as you guys can see, between two, two, two teammates, both from the MTW clan, and as you can see right here, here we have MTW the Muslim as uh, the Zerg in the 6 o'clock position, and ironically, MTW Dimega as Terran in the 2 o'clock position now normally these guys well I'll tell you guys the story behind this this game is actually from the go for SC2 cup uh, number 29 I do believe and this is the final the very final match and where's this SCV going uh oh look at the placement looks like we're gonna see Reavers but uh <laughs> yeah uh, now the story behind this game is uh MTW Dimaga played MTW Demos them and he did lose the first two games where he was Zerg, where Dimega was Zerg, and the Muslim was actually Terran. But ever since then, the first two games, uh, after the first two games, Dimega switched it up to Terran, and uh, the Muslim switched to Zerg. And ever since then, Dimega has taken two games. So now the series for the go for SC2 Cup number 2029. 20, uh, is tied 2-2 so this is the final and the deciding match to see who gets that prize money who gets the fame and glory and you know who gets bragging rights and all the goodies you know what I'm saying boys so yeah here we have uh, Dimega getting down the supply depot um, building the barracks and now he is attaching the tech lab I'm assuming he's gonna build Reavers uh, Reaper sorry about that still on the Starcraft one days <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, as I said, now we have the first Reaper of the game being trained, and uh, let's look at this rally point right here. It is going all the way across, and if you're wondering how to do this kind of rally point, all you got to do is just hold shift and click. Alright, so that's that. Now, looking at the production tab, yeah, we see the Reaver, the spawning pool just finished. So, yeah, there are going to be a couple Zerglings popping up, the Queen, and Metabolic Boost being researched for those Zerglings. Now here we have MTW Joy Maga exploring this area. He is going to see what is going on in the Muslim's base. And he does see so far a standard build for this map, you know, which is uh oh well, what can I say? It's a standard build for this map. So here comes uh Dimaga with his first Reaper, picks up one of the Zerglings, already gets a kill. That's right, that's how it's gonna be for this uh, Reaper. He's going to be getting a lot of kills I suppose. So here he's trying to uh kill the worker but uh, he's, he only got a chance to do two shots and not the third and the killing shot. So, yeah, here we have Demos them realizing that the barracks is going up. He is going to go and try to kill this SCV. And it does look like the SCV is going to go down, no problem, as the Muslim is trying to clear up this area. Uh, strategically, he is keeping his Zerglings on the creep until the metabolic boost has been researched. And then he's going to try to uh, send them out after these Reapers and try to catch them in a bad position. Because uh, with that Metabolic Boost, the Zerglings are unable to kill Reapers and to catch them, well, to, to catch them as far as speed goes. So yeah, here we have the Queen, cut out of position a little bit, but uh, yeah, she's going to go return. She's going to slap that juice into the hatchery, so the hatchery can produce extra larvae. And now we have these two Reapers trying to pick up as much Zergling as they can. They hop down the cliff. And they're going to hop back up, I'm assuming. Mm, there we go. Um, yeah, his bunker did get finished. I, I did... Well, I don't think he cancelled it. I think he got destroyed, really. But, uh... uh so far, Dimega playing as Terran has done quite well. You know, he's microed... Uh, you know, he's microed his Reapers the way he needs to. And he, he picked up a bunch of kills, did a little bit of harass, but... Uh, I don't think enough to make a difference. Now, as we see the Spire did go up uh, the spire is going up right here as soon as the layer was completed so yeah it is going to it is going to show us uh, what uh, the Muslim is thinking of building and look at this boys we have ghost Academy being uh, built against uh, a Zerg army now some of you guys might be wondering you know why would you get ghosts against uh, some guy who's going mutilings I'll tell you why man because uh, not only are ghosts uh, you know they're, they're pretty decent pretty good at killing Zerglings, but don't forget that they're snipe ability, man, and they can uh, use that on the Mutas, and basically, you know, one one ghost 
can kill two meters, you know, assuming he has full energy. But uh, yeah, because he takes three snipes to kill a, a meter. So yeah, a ghost can do eight. But uh, you know, that's just a strategy that you know I'm going to throw out there. And as you can see, he is building the ghost. Now the players are talking a little bit about leg, and uh, let's look at the harvester tab a little bit. Quite similar. Uh, Dimega a little bit ahead because of the Terran. And looking at the army sizes, that is also quite similar. Now I'm going to slap it back to the production tab. Here we have Chimaga coming in with a bunch of Reavers, trying to take advantage, trying to kill as many Zerglings as he can. But these Zerglings now have Metabolic Boost. And as you guys can see, they are fully capable of chasing these uh, Reapers around the map. And the Reapers uh, pick up that hatchery, destroy the hatchery, and destroy the drone that was building it. So, you know, that's uh, a little bit of a hit to the Muslim's economy, but I don't think he's going to be uh, too worried about that. And he does, as he does, uh, have his spire up. And here we go, boys. The initial uh, mutualisks have been built, and they are on their way, it seems, to uh, do a little bit of worker harass in this area. But uh, what can I say, man? Where's those ghosts? I'm waiting for the snipes. And let's hear that sexy sound of the snipe. Quite a sexy sound. Where is it, man? All right, so <laughs> I'm like waiting for it, and I ain't gonna miss it. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, here we have the ghosts standing around because they know that uh, the mutilers are waiting in that area, trying to take advantage. At the same time, a couple of zerglings get into the base, and look at that, man. These ghosts are pushing away this uh, overload. But the zerglings getting into the base, they are going to try to do some damage. The reapers will take care of them, no problem, and. Are there going to be a snaps? There we go. There's the first one. And look at that, man. Took 45 from this uh, Mutilus health. And as you guys can see over, over there, man, that the ghost can be a good counter early on against Mutilus when their numbers are still small. And look at that, man. Mm, 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 mm. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Look at that damage, man. A lot of damage being done to the Mutas. Now, looking at the production tab, uh, the Muslim is putting down his hatchery once again and just sticking with what works for him f so far he has opted to get uh, quite a few more zerglings and well why not right this is the build that he has chosen to go mutilisk and uh, zerglings and here comes those mutilisks that were injured uh, quite harshly at the hands of MTW John Maga's ghost now look at this and I, I, you guys notice that this is becoming more and more of a trend in North American and European style of play and I do have to believe that they did adopt this style of play from uh, Korean gamers and Asian gamers because this is what they love to do. A lot of times they even stick to one base, two hatcheries, and yeah, they'll just uh, murder you with mass zerglings or mass roaches or whatever it is that they choose to mass. And as you guys see, man, it is starting to spread. So if you are a zerg player, you know, you don't always have to have uh, one hatchery per mineral line. You could have two hatcheries inside your base. But anyways, he uh, here we go. The overseer putting... Uh, this disgusting little thing on the buildings that prevents them from building uh, uh, units for 30 seconds. Now look, I hear more and more snipes, and yeah, the snipes basically have nullified these mutualisks, and they're unable to attack. Here we have the Muslim searching this area for an expansion, pa uh, expansion pack. <laughs> <laughs> for an expansion but there is none there it is on its way though it is going to be there quite shortly and the zerglings are going to see it they are going to surround those two SCVs and kill them but here we have the reapers who want to take revenge uh, on the deaths of those SCVs and let's see how they handle the these zerglings uh, they're waiting for backup I do believe yeah from the ghosts and a couple of marines that are being produced now keep in mind that uh, MTW John Mega has put up a bunch more barracks and uh, starport and whatnot. So here we go. The combat takes place. The zerglings are unable to even touch this army from uh, Jamaica, and it, it must be funny for Jamaica because he is a zerg player, and now he's playing Terran, you know, and he's he must be like, hmm, Terran, OP, OP, OP. But uh, yeah, here we have these a couple of uh, mutilers still waiting by. And look at that man. How many zerglings are being produced? A ton of zerglings. Uh, here we have uh, the starport has gone up, the reactor is on it, and it is going to be uh, producing medevacs as well as we st we're starting to see some rudders come out as uh, combat shield is being researched and uh, Stimpak was also researched a while ago for them. So looking at the Muslim's base, he is going for uh, Hive and I do believe, well, 
let's see what he does with Hive. Maybe Banelings, maybe he's gonna uh, get some of those to complement his army because that would be a good choice. As you guys can see, there are a lot of infantry and the Banelings do quite a lot of damage. Now here we have a Jarmaga attacking the Muslim's hatchery. The Muslim cancels it. It does not uh, get destroyed, so he does save his minerals right there. And these mutilers are still just waiting nearby. So it does look like that MTW Jarmaga is going to make a push after killing this overload, of course. And let's see what uh, the Muslim has waiting for him. The Muslim has a, a bajillion zerglings waiting for him. I'm going to take off the health bars over there so we can see the fight a little more clearly. And let's see if I could get a better angle. No, that's not going to work. Uh, this is all right. So yeah, here we have the zerglings surrounding all all of the units from Liquid uh, Liquid Cielo, from Jarmaga. And as you guys can see here, man, the zerglings murder majority of that army and uh, look at that man there's a ton of zerglings in this area still left and the medevacs are forced to load up the zerglings and fly away and uh, looking at the base of mtw john Maga, his minerals are starting to run out so it is a good idea for him to get that expansion that he has right here as you guys can see now he was sending an additional uh, army down there but uh, realizing that mm, dear load look at all these zerglings running to this expansion area see now a lot of Terran players, man, they always like to get Orbital Command for everywhere they go, but, you know, sometimes uh, getting the Planetary Fortress, you know, you know, like, it would have saved him here very, very easily. He would have kept all his workers, but, uh, yeah, as you guys see, he doesn't have Planetary Fortress, and he lost all his workers over there. But, uh, you know, I don't think he cares too much, because he did kill a lot of Zerglings as well, but I hope you guys get my point, you know, like, it's, it's not always about building more and more mules, and building more and more orbital commands like imagine if he had a planetary fortress here right all those zerglings would have been pwned instantly and he didn't have to produce all these workers all over again but uh, you know as I am saying that you know he is telling me like shut up basically as <laughs> as he's popping down a bunch of uh, mules but uh, yeah you know I mean it's a it's a style of play right you gotta make the right choice sometimes but uh, yeah, here we have Jarmaga loading up a ton of units into the medevacs. He's going to drop them in a very, very tight area. I'm going to see if I can get a better angle. And it doesn't look like I will be because it's a very tight area. I'll keep it at this angle. The Zerglings back away. And dear lord, look at this area, man. How many of those Zerglings are going to be Banelings? And look at this. Jarmaga is actually pushing to take out this hive to remove all hive tech uh, available to them as them. And he even takes down the spire and look at this we have the banelings coming in screaming their chant they are trying to take out as much as they can and, mm, they did take down about 12 zerglings uh, about 12 marines over there and as you can see from the forces of Jaimaga, they have been dwindled down uh, quite a large amount courtesy of uh, the muslim and here we have uh, Jaimaga trying to take down this uh, spawning pool and look at that man more and more uh, banelings come in but that was i think the the only guy that died was this lone uh, marauder, so <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. But here we have more. Yeah, it, it does uh, seem like it is too too late for the Muslim, as uh, the JJ has been tossed out. And yeah, it does look like that MTW Jaimaga, one of my favorite Zerg players playing Terra in this game, he will end up taking the go for SC2 Cup ninth, uh, number 29. And the prize is actually pretty weak. I think it's like 100 pounds. Uh, which is like, I don't know, like 200 bucks, but, uh, or 100 euros, I should say, sorry about that, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's about bragging rights.